And now that, boys and girls, was a David Moyes masterclass performance. He would have loved that. I did a video a, a little while ago, maybe a week, maybe two weeks ago, and, and I talk about uh, I talked about David Moyes' master plan. And you know, there was there was a, a few people laughing, saying, "Ah, oh, yeah, David, David Moyes' master plan." I wasn't necessarily saying I would agree with it. It was um, the the gist of the video was in David Moyes' vision. What does he see his perfect team as? And I mentioned James Wall Prowse within that because obviously we've been linked and rumoured to buy him. But that, what we just saw, is exactly how David Moyes would perceive in his own mind his chosen tactics to win a game. We also saw they would have been Pochettino's chosen tactics to win a game. But David Moyes will have always been sure in his mind if you give me the correct players, I can play my defensive style, surrender. Surrender absolutely the possession. That's not a problem at all. But give me the players to counter-attack with. Give me the players to get a set play. Give me good defenders and I can win football matches. He thinks his style is better than other people's style. He, on, honestly, he really, really does. Even if he had all the money at his disposal, David Moyes would not play like Pep Guardiola. And you, <laughs> Guardiola, and you, you would saw that against Chelsea. You absolutely saw that. And what, what a way to be vindicated with... James Ward Prowse. Before I speak about the James Ward Prowse stuff, though, when we went down to ten men, I said to my son, "This, this is not, this is not going to be a problem for Moyes because everyone's sitting back anyway." And actually, I thought at the point we went back down to ten men, a number of players really came into their row. Firstly, Thomas Suchek came into his own. He was. He was crap in the first half, absolute rubbish. But I tell you, he came into his own anyway. Let, let, and and. Let me just talk about James Ward Prowse, though. That I counted, James Ward Prowse took three corners, right? The first one, dangerous as hell. There was a bit of a scramble, and then, I don't know, someone sort of attempted a bit of a scissor kick. It didn't quite work out. The goalkeeper got it, but it was almost a goal. The second corner, we score a goal. We score a goal. And it was really good from Nathan Good. Gives the guy a little nudge. But it wasn't just a little nudge. It was the header was so accurate. It was... It was perfect. That's why he was bought. <laughs> and it worked out. It worked out perfectly. David Moyes got every excuse to walk in, walk into that press conference really smug because uh, he's been chasing this guy for a long, long time. And that's why he's been chasing him. It was outstanding. Now, I must be honest, I barely saw James Ward Prowse throughout that game. Uh, the, I thought the other corner, the third corner, was also very, very good. Yes, it was headed out by a Chelsea player, but it was dipped right under at the near post. Uh, it was dangerous as hell. Dangerous as hell. Um, the next time I really noticed James Ward-Prowse was when he, with his left foot, curled a through ball through to Mikel Antonio. Uh, it was, number one, it was good vision. Number two, it was really well executed by any standards. I mean, you consider it was with his weaker foot. It was, it was really good. It had to be done with his weaker foot because if he had played it with his right foot, it would have curled in the wrong direction. He needed to play it with his left to, to put it to curl it, to shape it towards Antonio. Uh, and it was it was just outstanding. It was just outstanding bit of creative play. The way Antonio controlled it on his chest was 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 brilliant. It was so good from Antonio. It's almost impossible to let him go when he does something like that. The way he was wasting time, when, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, um, drawing fouls, allowing the team to get up the pitch, he worked so incredibly hard, Antonio. At the, just at the point where he got taken off, he just won another free kick as well. It was it was impressive stuff, and and the Chelsea were getting more and more frustrated, more annoyed with with West Ham. I thought it was I thought it was some really excellent performances on there. Uh, obviously, I've just done the review over on the main channel, but I didn't really speak enough about Alphonse Areola there. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not, not going to... I just hope I hope Fabianski can, you know, not be too upset, really, because he's done a great job there, Ariola. He played really well. And I, and I want to I say that there was one particular part, aside from the saves and the penalty save and all the stuff, there was one bit where he looked like he was wasting time, looked like he was going to kick it, and he did a wonderful throw, a beautiful throw, which actually launched a West Ham attack down the left wing. And it was from that period of play where we were going to go on a little bit later and and we kept on going and wasting time down that left wing and eventually it was going to go and yield a um was going to go and yield a goal in the form of a penalty also Pablo Fornells almost scored i mean the way that Fornells 
and certainly Ogbonna, because they were the first two substitutes, hit the ground running at the pace of the game was, was exemplary. And it was a really, really weird one to, to look at because we, we, went, we went in the leads with obviously that Agurd goal which came from the, uh, that James Ward-Prowse corner. Then we retreated too much, as we do, as we have a tendency to do. Let them back into it. But we definitely, in the second half, had a little bit more attack about us. We, we really did. Um, I feel quite, uh, quite proud, actually. I've got to say, I feel quite proud of what Lucas Paqueta did. I, that shows serious, serious mental strength. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm astounded by it, actually. To decide to play, I've no doubt about it. David Moyes would have asked him, are you OK to play? And he would have said, yes. OK, well, you can say the words, but do you mean it? Are they true? He might mean it, but they might not be true. He might think he's all right to play, but he's not. It was outstanding. It was just outstanding. And I've got to be honest with you, I think if I was a Manchester City player, uh, sorry, if I was a Manchester City fan and I was watching that game, I'd be looking at it, feeling a little bit gutted that things have broken down irrespective of the reasons that they have broken down. I think if I was a Man City player, I'd be looking at it thinking, ah, oh, you know, that's, that's, that's gutting. That's absolutely gutting. Um, so I, th I think we're starting to see um, the green shoots of David Moyes' what he wants to do with David Moyes' plan. I, I really do. And I say the green shoots, we are still playing these tactics with one hand tied behind our back. Because for a lot, Bowen, in terms of the counter-attack, in the first half, Bowen didn't see the ball. Antonio saw the ball once, once, got into a foot race with um, uh, Thiago Silva. Apart from that, all of the, all of the time we, got a, we were able to counter-attack in that first half was with Ben Rama. And he's not quick enough. Uh, he, he was better. He did some better things in the second half. But that first half, Ben Rama was awful, really awful. Uh, he wasn't on his own. I said, I said, told you, uh, Suchek was as well. And... He, he lacks the pace and he lacks the cutting edge. His decision-making was wrong. Delayed pass. Pass when he should shoot. He shoots when he should pass. He crosses when he should lay it off. It, it was all wrong. It was all wrong in the first half. He, he was the only one that was getting any sort of traction down that left-hand side. And that's because I didn't think they were quite... I'm talking about our left-hand side. I didn't think they were quite as marauding Chelsea down that side as they were down Sue Fallon Bowen side, which I thought allowed... Um, it, it, it allowed Ben Rama to get forward a little bit more. My point being, I still think there's room for improvement in terms of the counter-attack. And I don't know if this, if we, we end up uh, getting Caduce or not from Ajax. If we do, uh, he's going to be a massive help in that situation. And if we can do that against Chelsea, who are going to be a good team this season. I know they've only got one point, uh, but I'm sure they're going to, they're going to, they're not going to, they're not going to be down the bottom of the league all season. They're really not. They're going to be a good team. They're going to pose teams problems. I think Liverpool are a good team. Liverpool got a hell of a front line actually. And um, their midfield looks a bit better now. Uh, Sabozlai, is that the guy's name? And, um, and McAllister, they look good in midfield. Yeah, it was a draw between Chelsea and them. So, uh, and I thought there were times actually against Bournemouth when Bournemouth gave Liverpool trouble as well. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit early to say on anything in terms of Premier League points or anything. But I think in terms of David Moyes building this team, uh, I, I, I think I think we're going to be bloody hard to beat actually. And I mean, I, I thought I thought that for some time, um, which is why I, I didn't. You know, I thought we'd, we'd be all right this season. I, I, as I predict, I predicted knockout in the in Europa again, and, and I thought we we you know I thought we'd be I, I can't suggest that I thought we'd be one of the top teams in the Premier League. I didn't. I just didn't think we'd get relegated. Uh, but uh, it was goals I was worried about and pace. If David Moyes can sort that out, then we're going to be horrific to play against. Really horrible, 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 horrible team to play against on set pieces. It's going to be a nightmare. And um, I think the, the trouble is with Ward Prowse, as good as he is, they were always selling players. Whenever they started to get a team together, they were selling players. They were never able to spend big money and bring players in. West Ham aren't in that position. Southampton were never going and buying a £30 million player here, a £40 million player, another £30 million, another £40 million player. That, that stuff happens at West Ham. So he's, David Moyes is going to be able to bring people in who are going to compliment James Ward-Prowse. I'm quite excited, actually, to see even more of it. Anyway, um... I'm going to skedaddle and I will catch up with you lot uh, tomorrow. I just thought it's, it's really good to come off the weekend with that. And then the next few days, we, we, we're sort of buoyed by a really good result, aren't we? And then um, 
any transfers that come in now, we can think, hey, this is, this is, this is pretty good. So, um, hey, I'm pretty happy with that. That's not a bad start to the season.